Maker, it's Claire from Eat Claire Makery. If this is your very first time to my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of my fun crochet videos. And today I am here to talk to you guys all about how to start your very own crochet blog. I have been getting a lot of questions recently about this of what hosting sites do you go with, what, how do you even set up your website, and how do you even begin to start blogging. And I have been doing this for almost a year now and through that I am a non-tech person and I have had to learn so many different things about how to run a blog, how to do tech stuff for it, and so I'm really excited to start this series on my blog and my channel here to get to share with you guys all of my tips and tricks of how to do it so that your blogging experience can be as easy as possible. So back when I was 13, I had this dream of I wanted to be a crochet blogger. I thought, okay, I just need to put my designs out there, put it out into the world, just have a site, and then I'll become a huge success. Which sounds simple enough, right? I mean, it can't be that hard to be a blogger. At least that's what I thought. Um, I just kind of set aside that dream as I started learning more about what was involved, and I was young. I didn't know what I was doing, but last year, um, my now husband, Steven, he really encouraged me to try to pursue my dream again of being a crochet designer and blogger, and he saw how I loved to write and create patterns and be creative, and with having some chronic health issues, I have to work from home just to work with my chronic pain. And so he thought, hey, you should try to create your own job. So I thought, hey, why not? I will go for it. So I started doing tons of research, looking into everything of like, what even is a hosting site? How do you pick a website name? How do you start your blog? How do you even use WordPress? And I kind of drowned a little bit in all the information out there, but I decided to still go for it. And I want to share those things that I have learned because I let my fear stop me in the past from pursuing this dream of being a blogger because it seemed like so much work. But after learning all of the things and having some different mentors help, um, help me just in this journey, I have been able to live out my dream and I love being a blogger. Yes, it is hard. Yes, there are things that don't work and things that do work, but I love it. And I know that a lot of you have been reaching out to me of wanting to start your own blogs. So you might be wondering, why on earth would I need a blog for my crochet business? Maybe you're already started and established with selling your patterns online through Etsy or Ravelry or Love Crochet, and you kind of don't know where to go next in your business, or maybe you're just happy with where you're at. Either way, wherever you're at, um, having a blog can really help your business grow, especially if you feel stuck or maybe you're not even started at all and you just want to kind of jump into this whole world of being a crochet designer and a crochet blogger. So why you would want a blog is a blog really helps grow your business and take it to the next level. Not only does it help establish your credibility with your audience by being having a place where you can share your knowledge and share your patterns and give you that credibility with companies that you work with, um, but it also gives you the opportunity to reach a wider and larger audience. Um, when you have a website, you get to be shown up in Google searches with your blog posts and crochet patterns. You can share your um, things on Pinterest and have a place for people to come see free crochet patterns or a place to write about your paid crochet patterns. And once you have free crochet patterns on your website, that opens up a lot more traffic and um, a better incentive for people to want to come onto your website. And so that draws in more people, which then gives more exposure to the paid versions of your patterns, which you can include a link to in those blog posts, which then can lead to you generating more income. So no matter what, having that space for more of an audience to come to can benefit you. 
it also gives you the place where you can have um, more streams of income coming in through things like affiliate sales and ad revenue. Um, when you have your own site, you can install Google AdSense, which is an ad, Google's ad network that will pay you every time someone comes onto your website. Depending on the amount of pages you get will determine the amount of money you get paid when you're starting. It won't be very much, but the potential is really huge of what you can get from the amount of traffic you get to your site. Um, you also can then eventually apply to other ad networks which pay you more money for the traffic you get to your site. And then through affiliate sales you can recommend products to people and then every time someone clicks on your link and buys through that link you get a commission from the product that you have shared with people, reviewed, and convinced them to buy from you. So no matter what you can earn more money through being a blogger and you can reach more people with your patterns. So basically the first thing that you need in order to start your blog is a hosting site. You'll kind of hear this word thrown around of web hosting and you'll wonder what in the world is web hosting? What does that even mean? Well, basically, your web host is your internet landlord. They are the people that help you run your site, they help make sure things go smoothly, that it runs at a decent speed, um, that you have enough storage space on your site in order to create the content that you want to make, and you just have to pay a small fee to them every month, and they do most of the work on the technical side for you. So. Basically, they just do what a good landlord should do for you, am I right? <laughs> um, uh, there, there will be a couple different sites that will be thrown around when it comes to starting your blog. Um, a lot of bloggers recommend the site Bluehost, but I have a story to share about that site because I had a very poor experience with them. I, I looked at some different blogging resources and a lot of them were suggesting Bluehost saying that they were a good starting platform for um, beginner bloggers. So I thought, hey, why not? Signed up with a three-year plan with them and thought, hey, let's just do this. Let's see what happens. Well, I started my Hello Summer blog hop earlier this month and <laughs> I started getting more traffic and all of a sudden one day my site, my site started having a lot of trouble loading. It wouldn't work, didn't know what was going on, and I kept having people saying they couldn't get on my site, and then by the end of the day it had completely crashed and there was just a blank page. So I had tried to reach out to Bluehost um, four different times over the course of about 36 hours, and every time that they, like, tried to help me, they kept saying that nothing was wrong, but there was obviously something wrong because my site was not working for anyone. So I reached out to some of my close blogger friends and they said that this is a problem that a lot of people run to, into with Bluehost when they start getting more traffic. Even if they have the plan like I did where you can have a ton of traffic coming into your site. So I was shocked. I thought it was a great beginner starting software, but it wasn't. And I even reached out to a tech support guy that they recommended to me, and he confirmed the same thing, that every time that, <laughs> that when a blogger gets to a certain point with traffic, Bluehost puts them to the back burner on their site, so then you don't get the service that you need. And he said that they wouldn't admit that because it's their server's problem. I was shocked. I'm not a tech person. I don't know any of this stuff about, about like, how to run a website beyond what I've kind of picked up here and there from blogging. Um, I didn't know, like, I don't know how to do coding or anything. I just know how to use stuff that's already there. Um, but he recommended reaching out to the site called SiteGround, and they are another web hosting service that I have come to really love. I ex reached out to their support team to say, hey, this is what's going on with my site, and they confirmed they've been getting a ton of people switching over to them from Bluehost because a lot of people are having the same issues that I've been having. Um, 
and I was like, hey, I'm desperate, I don't know what to do, they won't help me, what, what should I do? And they were able to help me set up a plan with them. Um, they switched over my WordPress site from Bluehost to theirs. I didn't have to do any of the technical stuff. They helped me fix my tech issues and get it all done within less than 24 hours. It was amazing. It saved my life in the middle of my huge blogging event that I was doing. Um, then, <laughs> the story just keeps going on. When I reached out to Bluehost to ask them for a refund, they would not give it to me, even though I had over two years left on my contract with them. And I told them, hey, I had tried to reach out to you guys and it stuff wasn't working. And they were like, well, sorry, you didn't use the right words <laughs> in order for us to expedite your ticket for your site. So I didn't know what words to say. I didn't know that I had to say specific things. I just thought that they were going to help someone who was tech impaired like I was, but they didn't. So why am I telling you all of this? You might want to skip it, but I just want you to know my experience with Bluehost so that you can get the best service for your site that you possibly can. That is why I wholeheartedly recommend using SiteGround. If you've looked into those two different sites before, um, SiteGround has the same exact pricing which is around $3.95 a month for a starting plan for a web hosting and they offer better service, they help you, uh, they go above and beyond what you need them to do on your site um, and they respond super quickly and they always find the issues that are going on with what's going on with your website and I haven't had any issues so far with now that I've switched over to them. Um, basically, you just want to make sure that when you're starting out blogging, you want to find a company that is going to work with you and make sure that you get the best service possible. And so that is why I am sharing my experience of what happened to me with blogging and help you guys kind of find out, hey, this is what my experience has been. Here is another great service that I have used now. And al almost all of my really well-known blogger friends use SiteGround now because they've heard some of the similar experiences and um, they really just wholeheartedly recommend them. So I would go ahead and start with SiteGround and they have a couple different plans that you can pick in order to make sure um, that you get the best one that fits for you. So they've got a startup plan for beginner bloggers, they have a grow big one for when you get more traffic, and then they have a third one for when you get really huge. So I would recommend going with the startup one just because when you're first starting out, you don't really need a ton of space or a ton of traffic availability because um, it's going to take some time to get that traffic to your site. But if you start feeling like, hey, I need to switch, SiteGround is really great with helping you switch to the next plan and it's not that much more money. Basically, if you just don't go to Starbucks or do a coffee shop once, during the whole month you'll have paid to have your website for a whole month and I would recommend doing a one year plan with them just in case you realize hey I'm not really huge into this blogging thing you pay for your year service all at once so for the grow big plan it's about ninety dollars um, which that might seem like a lot for a startup cost but <laughs> I started out with Bluehost with a way more expensive one um, and with the cheaper plan it will be a little bit less than that. Uh, and also you just want to start from having a good hosting site from the beginning because they will allow you to have your own domain, they will help allow you to have your very own space on your blog and then you'll be able to make it your own. and you really want to have a blog because they it's your place where you can be you you can customize it to represent your brand you can um, list your products you can create blog posts to help other crocheters or other business owners 
You can share your free crochet patterns. Basically, it is a site that represents you and what you want to do with your business. And if you have your own site, a lot of big companies really like working with people who have their own websites because it shows that they have an authority in the place where um, in the niche that they are working in. So if you ha go to a free web hosting service, they are going to put their website name within your web address. So it would be like mycrochetbiz at dot wordpress.com. So it's not going to just be mycrochetbiz, which would be your business. It would be their business along with your business. If you go through a hosting site, you are able to have just your business, it's just you, no one else, and you can name it whatever you want and make it fit your brand exactly how you want it to be. So you might be wondering, okay, so now I'm convinced to want to start a crochet blog, so where do I go? Well, I'm going to walk you through the beginning steps of how to set up your plan with a site like SiteGround and walk you through how to get that set up so that you can start working your way to crochet blogging success. When you are ready to set up your website, you will want to go to www.siteground.com and this is what their home page looks like. So you'll see different things where you can learn more information about web hosting, um, WordPress hosting, WooCommerce, which is having a store on your site, or cloud hosting. So since you are starting a blog, you want to go ahead and click here on the WordPress hosting. And this is the leading blogging software and SiteGround offers it as a part of your hosting plan. So when you go to click on that, you could also go up here to the hosting section and then just click on WordPress hosting. Um, but you'll see the three different plans that are here. So there will be the startup plan, the grow big plan, and the go geek plan. I have the grow big plan here, which is $5.95 a month. Um, this is a great deal if you are already have an established website and you are trying to grow your site to get bigger. I um, moved up from this one to go to here, um, but this is a great one to start, especially since you'll only be starting out with probably not much of an audience, but this gives you a ton of flexibility to build up your audience. So you get one website as a part of your hosting plan, you get 10 gigabytes of web space and 10,000 monthly visits. Um, from different users on the internet. It also comes with these different WordPress features. So you'll see things on here like free WordPress install, um, free SSL certificates, free email address, daily backups, WordPress updates, 24-7 WordPress support. Basically, it gives you all of the features that you need in order to confidently start your blog. Um, if you want to say go for it already and maybe you have an audience that you know will want to go to your blog, you can go ahead and start with this. But as a beginner, I recommend doing the startup plan for sure. So once you have picked out your plan, um, such as a startup one, then you'll click here on the get plan button. And it will take you to this screen right here where it'll ask you to please enter your domain. So your domain is your website address. This is the name of your company or the name of your blog that you are choosing. So you want to pick something that best represents who you want to be as a crochet blogger and kind of the vision that you have for your business. So my domain name is www.eclairemakery.com. Um, but for example, on here, we'll just do my crochet biz. Now, you don't have to do this name, but this is just um, my example one just to help you walk you guys through this. So then you have the option here of having it be a .com or really any of these other ones. So I, I suggest doing the .com if you can or a .org. Those are the most well-known. Um, domain endings so I would go with those. Now here on the bottom you'll see this part that says domain registration. So what that means is that not only will SiteGround host your website but they will also host your domain name. So you 
if you want to have your own domain name, you do need to pay for that so that it does not have another company's um, business name within your website address. I think this is a great deal for just getting it. You just pay it once a year and you don't have to worry about this at all again for an entire year. So say this is the name that we've picked and you click proceed. You can click on here. And so then we come to the part where it says, okay, hey, your domain name was available for registration. If ha it has already been taken, then you will have to choose a different name. Um, if it's not exactly your business name, that's okay as long as it's as close to your business name as you possibly can get it. So then what you'll do is you will fill out all of this information on here, like your email address, your password, client info, payment information, and then down here it will show you basically the package that you are getting through SiteGround. So we have selected here the 12 month period. You can also get it for 24 months or 36 months. I think that it's still that for a beginner blogger to go with 12 months, you can always increase your plan to be for longer. But when you do buy these larger plans, you do pay for the full amount right away. SiteGround also has the option where you can do a trial for one month to see if you even like doing it. And then you don't have to pay the full amount, but you still get the experience and you can always upgrade your site later. So it will tell you down here what your um, hosting price per month is and what it regularly is on here and what you will be billed for. Um, it's only $47 to get this, which is great. Um, if you got the domain registration, it will be another $15.95. So it'll show up here as the total will be $63, which for getting a website service, that is awesome. Um, down here in the extra services, you'll see it's already checked if you chose to do your domain name through SiteGround, and I, I definitely do recommend doing this. You can also have the option of doing domain privacy, so if you want your, um, personal information to be private and as well as your domain, then you can get this so that you have domain privacy and your information is not out there. One thing that I do recommend getting, which I have myself, is the SiteGround Site Scanner. This is a daily monitoring service where SiteGround will scan your site to see if there is anything wrong, such as it being hacked or injected with malicious code, like it says here. And they, once they find something, they send you an email right away so that you can take care of it and contact their support to have them help you fix the problem. This is really awesome. Awesome to help kind of take away that worry of having to monitor your site all the time to make sure that nothing is wrong and they do all of the work for you. So once you have entered all of your information up in these boxes up here and chosen um, your period with hosting with them as well as any extra services you want, then you will click down here to say that you've confirmed that you agree to their terms and services and then that you would like to receive your site ground. If you want to get emails from them, you don't have to click on this, but if you do want to get um, notifications from them about their newsletter, then you can click here. I don't have it, so you don't need it. Um, so once you have done that, then you will have officially bought your website. Once you have set up your account with SiteGround, you'll want to log in, and this is what the homepage of your SiteGround user dashboard looks like. So it has all of these different tabs that say different things about your account, um, as well as if you want to become an affiliate with them, it'll have a little spot where you can go to their affiliate area. Um, so what your next step is going to be is you will need to install WordPress onto your account with SiteGround. Now, if you feel like you are really good with tech stuff, you can go to their site. They've got a how to install WordPress manually on your blog tutorial. And this just walks you through everything like how to upload the files to your server, 
doing database stuff, going through installation things. Um, but if you're kind of like me and you're not really a super techie person, you can go to the support section here on your user dashboard, which will look like this. And so it'll have this spot where it'll tell you, okay, you can go back. This is the home area. And then it'll have this spot called view my tickets and tickets in with SiteGround are essentially just support things that you need help with from their staff. So they will, you'll say what you have an issue with and then they will do something for you. What they also do as a free part of their service with you is that you can have them install WordPress for you, which is super great and it takes a lot of time off of your hands. So once you click on the application installation button that was on your homepage of the support area, it will look like this where you can select um, that you want an application installation and then you can select your account that you have and then pick out which application that you want them to install for you. So you are going to want them to install WordPress and if you plan on having a store on your website, you can do WordPress plus WooCommerce. WooCommerce is WordPress's um, e-commerce site that creates a store for you, sets up payment things, shipping stuff, and just makes the process of having an online shop through your WordPress site a lot easier. So once you have picked out which application or applications you want them to install, um, then you will just fill out this information. It'll tell you um, that like it, on this first one it has a little asterisk so you know, okay, this is what this actually means. Then you will just put this stuff in there for them to do and then keep in mind that it will take maybe one business day for it to be installed and get set up for you on your site. But I really recommend doing this if you're not a tech person because I had someone do this for me and it makes it a lot easier so that you don't have to worry about learning how to set up WordPress or learning a bunch of coding stuff. So I really like doing this. And then once you fill out all of your information, you can pick what email you want them to send it to and then click submit in order for your ticket to be created for them to start working on getting your website set up for you. So once you get the notification from SiteGround that your site is installed, then you're going to want to go to your the My Accounts section on your SiteGround dashboard. So here you'll see, here is my domain name, eclairmakery.com, and it shows me what WordPress version I have installed, and then it'll have this button right here that says Go to Admin Panel. So once you click on that, then it is going to open up a window that looks a little bit like this. Everyone's dashboard is a little bit different depending on what you have um, installed on your site. So it will have anything like a spot from where you can do quick drafts of blog posts. It'll give you insights if you have Monster Insights installed. Um, it'll give you a glance of what your, how many posts you have, comments, pages, different things, as well as WordPress events and news. And then here on my spot right here, which I really like this, there is a plugin called Jetpack. Um, usually it is installed for you already. And this tells you all of the top searches that your site has had with your SEO and what people have clicked on in order to get to your site. And as well as it'll have this spot here that tells you how many page views per day you had as well as what was published on that day. So if there's nothing published, it'll be a little bit smaller. And this will just show you the different traffic that you have on your site. So here it will tell you your top posts for that day and how many views you had on each one. And on the side here, you will see this huge bar that has all of the different sections of your WordPress dashboard. So when you go to something like posts, it will have a spot for you to create your blog post. So here is mine. This is what my um, posts look like. I have things like SEO, SEO descriptions, as well as the categories it's in. And if you want to add a new post, you just click here on add new. 
and then you can write it up right here. Um, but what we really want to go over when you have just started your site is you want to scroll down here to appearance and then click on the themes. So here on the themes, this will show you all sorts of different um, themes that are available for your site to look like. So I have a the theme Daisy, and this is a really fun, simple um, template that I got offline, but you can also get templates through um, your hosting service or just through WordPress and there are a bunch of really good free themes that you can get So you can just browse through all of these and You can look and see okay, which one is going to fit my site? You want to have something that is clear for your audience to view um, and you can always comp uh, customize it a little bit more as you keep going so you can also um, like click on here, this is a business craft theme. If you click on it, it will tell you, okay, here's what kind of the homepage will look like. And as you scroll, you can your blog posts will show up like this. And this is just a preview of what your site could look like with that theme. Or you can go to the next one, and this is what the gym theme will look like. And then you can just close out of it when you are done. So just pick a theme, and then once you pick your theme, which you can also um, find through something like Etsy um, or other sites, then you will be ready to start brainstorming ideas for your blog and get your blog journey going. So I hope that you really enjoyed this video and it helped um, take you that one next step towards becoming a crochet blogger by setting up your website and getting that all ready to go. Um, go ahead and once you have your site set up, browse through themes. You can even look for themes on the internet and just kind of start figuring out and playing around with your WordPress dashboard to get yourself familiar with it. Um, in the rest of my series, I will be helping you go through different aspects of blogging such as how to write up a blog post, how to design things in Canva such as blog graphics and Pinterest graphics, how to promote your site on something like Pinterest, um, as well as how to set up a newsletter for your newfound blog. So be sure to once again subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on any of these videos as well as checking out my blog eclairmakery.com to stay updated on all of the written blog posts where I go um, in depth on all of these different things and I'm really really excited to bring this series to you and help you make your dreams of being a crochet blogger come true. Have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.